still live paintings from the sort of 17th century. So I would have wanted a kind of modern take on that and I wasn't quite sure where to go. But I was fortunate or unfortunate in the sense that I, I could hold all the lots of dead birds because my dad goes shooting. So I was, I was like literally asking to shoot things on order. <laughs> so I'd ask me you know, two or three pigeons, a couple of jays, some crows, a hare maybe. Um, this created a bit of tension because I'm kind of vegetarian, so I was kind of, in a way, I was kind of complicit with it, and I think this, this produces some of the tension in the work. Um, some of these things that, I, I mean, I was making these things almost automatically, I wasn't analysing them at all, perhaps like, like I'm doing now in retrospect, um, but they're about people and spirits and things. Um, Obviously using the butterflies in that context for this one here. So that was just, they were just simply nailed up on the wall, the light underneath. Um, I painted that one in about two weeks, I think. I started getting a bit more elaborate in these themes. This one here, it was, uh, I got this idea, it was like divine puppetry. And I was, look, I was listening to a lot of Mahler and uh, Wagner. Tristan and Isolde was kind of going through my head, so they had the kind of doom, doom lovers thing going through here. I was trying to make other connections, and it was, it was like, uh, I wanted to make connections with like the bigger, bigger world outside there. So there's some reference here to like the constellation of the Great Bear, almost. So this is some kind of, somewhere up there, this other figure, this other character here, manipulating these. Like I was making these, I knew they meant something, but I wasn't, wasn't quite sure what they meant. But they definitely meant something. And I'm still not 100% sure. <laughs> That's just the way it fell out. Do you, um, do you so, change it as you go along? There's, yeah, there's a bit of, I mean, these, these ones didn't take a lot, of, much sketching, just a bit of sketchbook work. And because they're pretty simple, it was pretty straightforward to just, you know, and the idea, of course, is to paint it, because they're dead, to paint it with energy. So you've got to contrast there against the, think about the dead, or perhaps in the composition, you know, get strong diagonals and stuff, all those usual tricks of the trade. I gave it to the girlfriend, and think, oh, I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's hung up on hooks inside a box, basically, fishing hooks. So that, this is how, actually how it was. These, these things generally really exist in you know, my work. Um, I suppose Wait. the next one from this one. No, it's not. When did you paint that? I painted that in the cellar. But when? Uh, about 1995. Oh. Mm -hmm. And look, the colours are still there. Mm -hmm. Therefore, proving good technique. <laughs> A good quality paint. I hope. Um, is this is this with your own pigments that you? No, not this one. No, these, these, these are these, these are like much earlier. But I was, I was still trying to get pigments that lasted because I'd looked into them. And you, you find out that they've been selling you ropey pigments for you think yeah, there's also like rose matter and Indian yellow, mm -hmm. which is you know made from mango leaves fed to cows and their urine and stuff like that. It's 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 not a really good pigment. But they got better, you know. Things like carpet, these like carpets now that last forever and things. But mm. I mean, I like using natural materials. You know, like, yeah. to like if it's hanging around, I can use it. But it's. <laughs> you seem to get to use natural materials. I know I do, but th at this point I was probably, I was, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it, most, I suppose a lot of the pigments are from natural materials. So I was using at this point. I wasn't using a lot of the the, the newer quinacridone colours no, particularly. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't, that wasn't so much of an issue. It's more of an issue when I'm doing the more kind of the fossil type stuff, really, um, which I'll, I'll talk about shortly, I guess. Okay. And then probably the next one up in here. I wasn't really looking at people like Hans Bellmer so much at that point, but uh, I, can, I can see if that could be thought through. Um, it's meant to be a little, a little bit comical. 
Mm. It is. But no, it's, it's, not, it's not. It's not too 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 serious. But I, I felt that so I, was, I knew it wanted to try and address the modern themes. I was, I was finding myself doing the same. Um, I was getting to still lives where the objects themselves were sort of interesting. And I figured I've got to paint stuff that's like it's, I, I don't want to keep at home. You know, it's actually, I wanted to sort of use it with a view to use it in the painting and not get fixated on the fact that it's just a beautiful object. Um, what were the packets? What was in the packet? Sweeties. Oh, well, the, the, these are like receipts here, basically. <coughs> so it's you can basically just receipts. Oh, yeah, they're like Tesco's okay. receipts. So this is just a list of characteristics you might want to order. You know, if you kind of got your you know, kind of a genetic choice after the first sex. Obviously, you could you could read through that later, but it's a tragic comic list. Okay. <laughs> like it probably undercuts the the you know the shock horror thing going on in it. But it's okay. It's just a doll. It's fine. <laughs> This, the, the, I've never really been before, and I just saw all these incredible basalt polished sculptures and the huge things, and I was completely blown away by it. But the, the contemporary art that was with it, it I thought it was like little, little tiny digs. It didn't have any, any effect on me, apart from it was like a frozen frog, which was kind of moving, because it was one of these ones that freeze solid and then they you know, come back to life again. So I, I get that, that's a neat idea, you know, you know the Egyptian thing. Uh, at the same time, I was kind of having some health problems, and I had to get lots of scans and things. And I was looking at these scans, and they kind of looked like uh, this one here, a bit, with the various black bits in. You know, you take sort of radioactive substances. Um, so this was this this is this is this is more stuff that's not being thought through logically. This is stuff that's just coming out of me, but I don't know. I can't. I'm not figuring it out. Um, it's called the Psycho Station Two. It's a sort of a it's this thing about it's an Egyptian judgment of the soul, and uh, it's like this judgment on uh, how pure your heart is, and it's weighed, etc. And it, you know, obviously, you know, he does crap jokes, Johnny. You go to hell. <laughs> You're consumed. So it's kind of like, like doing a bit of being like shroud like, and it's a bit like a water, watercolour or autopsy, but it's me thinking about me and almost being you know, really quite scared as well. Um, I didn't have any more much money at the time, so it's painted on really cheap paper. Like kind of crap fabric on paper. Mm -hmm. So it was going to get getting brutalised in the process as well. But I figured that was part of it. You know, the fact that it was getting so savaged and we're not wearing up too well in relation to the, to the watercolour. Um, this one's a follow on from that really. It's called the Hall of Double Judgment. It's about that bit where the, you know, you do become, your soul could become a part. And this, this is the, the Egyptian thing again. Were these your first um, full-figure paintings? I, I've done lots of full-figure stuff before, and I did a lot of naturalistic paintings beforehand, lots of oil paintings and things, so it was, it's not that, it's a, I think it's a first sort of jump into the stuff without, I was, it did, didn't really matter that it was uh, not naturalistic, because I'd always painted in a naturalistic way, it's sort of like I could make a jump, and because it was also, I was making these technical breakthroughs, that was pushing and driving along the, um, yeah, it was just driving the ideas. I, you know, I didn't have to think, so I just went with it because I knew it was true and everything. So I, I just went with it. Um, I guess that's another sort of judgment you want. And I was think, I think I read something. It was some sort of psychology. It was about they put themselves in a, like a it was like a logic within a trance. And um, I was thinking about the judgments other people have of you and your body, and then the judgments you have about your own body. And so there's all, all those things as well. And also about lots of medical stuff from my past where you're kind of surrounded by consultants and things. And I was a kid and it's, it's a, un underneath all of that, that's how I'm getting into it really. But it, on the surface it's about, yeah, how you're, how you're just observed from like within and outside of that. It's got a lot of impact with just the size of those heads. <laughs> <laughs> and the, body, the body looks quite long down there and the heads are enormous. But in a very cold Yeah, but it's not, I don't think it's like a, a nasty painting though, mm. not like this one. That's how it came out. The, the, the different faces though, mm -hmm. are they different people in the back? No, it's the same, same person, I just alternate, I need to alternate the angle very slightly, obviously it was, it was rising a bit, so I was looking just slightly underneath them, etc. Yeah. It's like a, a little, little tender sort of shift really. And I think it's because somebody knew it probably took away from the fact that it was a quite a, you know, intense thing. It, it lifted the mood. This is a particular person. Yeah. yeah. And this, this one came out sometime at a similar point, and it's um, 
It's got no title. I wasn't quite sure what it meant at the time. It's another one you can just paint it. I think, God, that means something, but I don't know what it means. And I still don't quite know, know what it means. It's kind of, even now, I can't penetrate what the meaning of it, except I was reading about sort of Scythian horse burials and um, like ice princesses being found in the Russian steppes, you know, kind of covered in felt, and there was so much care and everything taken over them, and there was such beauty when these things were un unearthed. There was, there was like a romance in it. And like, you know, the horses were buried in her and stuff as well, because they're like a horse people. So I was thinking about that. And this, is, this has got, perhaps got that stillness and that sense of time, you know, a few hundred years, well, yeah, a few hundred years, that's right. And um, I think that's what I'm trying to convey. It's like a t tension and a stillness within, obviously, the dramatic movement. A new uh, symphony. I lost the cathedral, so he says, oh, you know, we like your work. Can we put some work on, on side, on, alongside the, uh, the new piece of work that I've made? It's another pretty dark one, I guess, but you've got to, um, you know, it's a cathedral, you've got to give a crucifixion a go in a cathedral, right? Um, <laughs> it's like you're not going to do that. <laughs> it's like, forget it. <laughs> you know? um, so, yeah, this, there was like a 9th century chant going through the site, this kind of, uh, this, this new symphony is kind of written. So, this is, this is going through the head of the figure, etc. It's called Other Crucifixions, and it's the yeah, it's a sort of like a sort of secular kind of crucifixion, I guess. Um, but it's all about taking yourself away from the, mo the, mo the moment as well, the being like almost outside of your body. The figure here, it's not now, it's like descending into some kind of like cancer treatment machine or something. So it's almost a bit like being swallowed up by the machine and it becomes so distant from you. can become almost outside of yourself in, do in doing that, it's so strange. And I suppose I'd be thinking about things like, these, these sort of figures, these are like animals from the cave paintings. So you see just the outlines of like direwolves and bears and ibex. So I guess it's th this, the music takes you away from it. Thinking about the figures takes you away from it. That's the kind of crucified archaeopteryx weighing, uh, weighing up the whole kind of uh, intellect and the, whether the heart is a mechanism or not. This is like a grabber, like a fairground grabber. This is a yo-yo. This is me attempting humour in the middle of the blackness of it all. Crucially, just in case, this, this is important. <laughs> Don't know what's going to happen. Um, the cluster cathedral had any problem with it? You know, yeah, like a crucifixion with like yeah. syringes and things like yeah, that. Yeah, no, they were really good. I mean, having said that, I had to, I had to unroll one or two in front of the dean. Yeah. Um, you know, right, but he came along with his minions and everything, swept <laughs> along, and then, you know, he asked me about different conceptions of God, and I kind of, I, you know, I think I addressed them. Again, it was what I thought, back to him. And uh, so it passed. But it could have been a worry, but uh, it was okay. But it's yeah, so it's, it's like it's pretty much everybody else apart from religious people, really. That you know, I guess most of us know people that have gone through that or something. But it's uh, it's it's, it's and obviously a crucifixion is meant to emphasise with that anyway. But this is trying to do it in a slightly more direct way. These things here, these are like um, artificial hip joints, and I was figuring how long it would have been a tool, how far we'd come from. Um, you know, our ancestors with stone tools from like the last 750,000 years and how they've developed and everything. This is like an actually in hand axe, which is a bit like this. This is just like a scraper here. But if you imagine that teardrop shaped surface like that, that's what they look like. And then they get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's for cutting them. Yeah, and stripping perhaps, you know, bone and meat and stuff, or even cutting leather and things. Hard to say exactly. Could have been cleaning the teeth, who knows? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and what is this then? It's, it's some kind of flint. I think it's a French, a French, uh, a French one. But these things have always been with us, um, and they kind of relate. They, this relates a bit to the more recent work with, with the hammers, because at some point, you know, you've got a practical object, and it's when it becomes has like a value that's more than that. It's a shift of meaning because these actually in hand axes, they change from being. At certain times, not a practical thing, but they were like, you know, put in graves, or like say they were they were worked to a level where it was like they were like almost too perfect, or a certain colour like pink quartz that would be used, so it'd be more significant. So it's that change of mind really that I'm interested in, and sort of the the, the shift of the meaning. I think that these are the first artworks really when the, the meaning shifts from the practical into the yeah other thoughts. <laughs> Um, this, is, this, is, this is the garage for This is the antidote to this one here. This is the reverse crucifixion hammer. So, <laughs> maybe that helps. I, I kind of asked you this question already, but I mean, that's an enormously elaborate picture. Yeah. So, were you 
did you see it all before you started and made drawings for it all yeah. or were you discovering things as you were going along? Um, I'd said a lot, quite a lot of planning for this one. I executed it really quickly in about two weeks. I did the drawing for about another two weeks before that. And obviously in the last minute things, you change things and you know, add things to it and things that I add to it and bits and pieces like, you know, kind of trial by sword. It's like a little salamander so on it. Those, those could go in after it's done. Yeah, it's, it's not like thoroughly worked out in that sense, but it's, I've got to, because you can destroy the paper with your or drawing, you've got to work it out on like cheap paper elsewhere. Mm. With the complicated stuff, Sim more simple stuff like this one here, that, that's straightforward. Mm. Things with, there's a lot going on, you kind of, you need time to work through your ideas, you see. Mm. That's the thing. And that, I feel it's as though you are discovering things as you start working, but I know how oh, yeah. difficult that is in watercolour, because you can't check yeah, make yeah, changes. Yeah, you, if, if you nudge it in the wrong direction, you've got to keep, keep going or incorporate that. Yeah. It's like the mistakes are part of it. Um, you, you've got to ride the wave. <laughs> Almost like some kind of progress, mixing like ideas of progress are not the same, you know, scientific ideas of progress with like, it's, it's, it's an abstract thing, you know, it's kind of, full of like moral value progress. It's a dodgy word really. Um, so yeah, it's that sort of scientific racism really, I guess. And it's sort of illustrating. These, I mean, these angles in the head, these, these are sort of really done. And obviously it's geared towards like modern Western European. Therefore, you know, it's, it's a flattering thing. You know how it is, like criminal types, etc. You know, how, how, how the world used to be. Um, but the, yeah, but actually, the actual angles and stuff, I made them all up, so it's <laughs> deliberately. Um, so that's that one. This one here is like a, it, um, there's a famous, I don't know if it's in the famous Archaeopteryx fossils where their arms are twisted back on themselves, but it's like this unique fossil which is intermediate between like uh, reptiles and birds. It's like, it's like the key fossil, but yeah, it's like the key bit of evolution. This is like a, this is like a holy thing. And that was, um, so the idea is it's like a kind of, almost like a fossilised angel type thing kind of writhing around a bit. I painted it when I had a studio in the, like a, something called the New Light Church in Cheltenham. They were a bit tense for me, and I don't quite know why, because I didn't really talk to them about the work, but it was a bit of a weird one. Um, it's called Reconstructing Arch Archaeopteryx, this one. Because um, I've run into a few religious people and they think they're all kind of fakes. So it's a sort of play on that. <laughs> Although they keep finding new ones, so some people are faking them apparently. This is a difficult one in the sense that it's, it's called uh, Animal Experiments, and it's about it is a sort of a scientific resur resurrection thing. And uh, you know, it's a promise that's sort of set to you if you're ill, but you can they can, they can make you well, but it's the price of what, what, what the price of that is. And uh, I figured if the animals were going to be the price of it, they could be almost make, make, make them holy. And then they'd make this sort of sacrifice. And it's, it's obviously like, obviously the animals are doing experiments too, so there's a little, little bit of humour in there, I reckon. Mm. Uh, this is one of these ones that I had a lot of trouble with showing. Um, ended up getting banned all over the place. Really? Banned in the sense that like, they wouldn't show it. Not as in the sense I could put it up there and then it was like, stripped down or anything, but... Sorry, sorry who would you know? Uh, Gloucester Museum and um, Oxford Natural History Museum. Oh, yes. well, I mean, was it, did you use the word animal experiments before they banned it? Yeah, yeah. It was just that was, that was the title that came with it as I was thinking right. I was making it. And um, they, they were worried about animal rights attacks and stuff. I mean, these were scientists I was talking to. They were worried about animal rights attacks? Yeah, they apparently had quite a lot. And I was like, well, it's, it's meant to be kind of even. And it's not necessarily meant to be like pro-science or anti-science. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make the point that it, well, it wasn't a bias in any way, <laughs> but they were very, very worried. And honestly, I looked at the fear in their faces and I thought, okay, fair enough. <laughs> and they had a lot of trouble with the, the same one. They had a bit of trouble with the, um, the mirror box piece down there as well, which I managed to persuade them to show. They thought that was anti-science, but it's not, but they, they thought it might be. So yeah, there's a lot of institutions. They think they, they can't take well, anti-science. Anti yeah, can't take yeah, it to any, any kind of critique. It's strange, isn't it? And obviously they're just presuming what other people are going to how they're going to react. I guess they're covering themselves, but you know, this is this is the nature of institutions, I think. And uh, I've had no trouble with it showing it elsewhere. The most difficult time was when somebody had a like a disabled kid, came straight up to it. And I thought I'm going to be very pure about my intent here and what I mean. 
which it, you know, which it was when I made it. And uh, look, luckily, she, you know, made the, the mum thanked me very much for making it and everything. I was kind of relieved about that, but I was, I was, you know, obviously open to kind of criticism. Really, I couldn't. Um, yeah, that's that's probably the most difficult kind of encounter I could have had with it. Well, what you know, real. when the child came up to you? Well, it, it's the same, you know, the child was disabled in a wheelchair and yes. um, not really communicating. It was, it was really the mother's reaction. Oh, I see. Yes. That's what it was, more than anything. Um, well, I imagine the child was probably amazed to find something in an art exhibition that actually resonated with. Well, no, if you're, if you're ill as a kid, you, you know, you want some kind of hope. And they, they tell you, you know, they're coming to the end, you know, next, next year it doesn't, but. So it's, it's the hope, even though it's like, it, it's, it's what science promises you, or medicine promises you. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this little one here is a bit later. Uh, it's about the time of all the wars. Mm -hmm. it was, it was it 2007 when it got particularly bad? And um, I figured I should at least try and address it um, in painting. Uh, I was thinking sort of structuring this on a little bit about um, the ecstasy of St. Teresa. But Benini, isn't it? Benini? Anyway, so there's like almost like the light, the holy light comes through and kind of it's, she's in this ecstatic state. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, that, that's just like a structural thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's sort of like, it, it's, it's not, this isn't like real violence. This is like me thinking it'd be good to sort of, because this ass-headed figure represents like a suicide bomber and it's only in a desert here. So it's somewhere in, you know, somewhere in like Iraq or something. And so it's almost like kind of Ed stopping that, that part of us, which is part of us, which is really malevolent and mm -hmm. crazy. I'm trying, trying to look into it, really. This little dog figure, it's like the innocence. This is me. <laughs> uh, I'm having a little dig here at various artists, because there's a big pile of like, war debris here. And I've got, got an artist here painting the sunset, so I figure, you know, if there's like a war zone in front of you on the TV every night, maybe just occasionally you should just not do the landscape painting. <laughs> you know, I think pa painting should try, you try and make it about modern life as much as you can, really. It's called uh, Postcards from the End of the World. And uh, I, had, I had a bit of a serious bereavement, but it's, it's, it's about the way your mind goes and that happens. So it's like you don't think in a logical way. It was a red, like uh, Joan Didion's A Year of Magical Thinking. Uh, like in tribal cultures and things, it's like, it's not, you know, you make connections between nature and things, and that means something in itself. It's that, it's that sort of way of thinking, rather than that, you know, do this, do this, this equals this. And I was in that mindset, because it was the only mindset that made sense to me. So I was seeing patterns in, like, the movements of birds and things. Obviously, because all this happened, like, during the war, so I'm making reference to the world being on fire, and the, they're the bombers there, taking off from our RAF Fairford. And, uh, yeah, lots of, so, yeah, things that mean something to me. Uh, the figures, I, I, I don't know. This is another sort of automatic thing. Although it was planned out, the spirals in there and all kinds of nonsense in the original drawing. It took me quite a while to work it out. Um, it's, uh, yeah, the, fig the figure is just like it's a kind of wounded man like in the cave paintings, but the arrows are working the ways out. I had a bit of trouble showing this as well because of the arrows in the figure. It was just, you know, here we go again. Um, so I had to kind of argue the case further and they were okay with it. Right, so at this point, I was spending a lot of time by myself. I was spending like, I don't know, a couple of days a week, eight hours, but by myself, trolling along the muddy beaches on the River Seven. And I thought I was looking for something, and I was kind of resolving stuff in my head. And there's, a, there's this sort of way of thinking, which is, uh, I, walked, I got into this way of thinking, which was like, I wasn't finding much, which is, you know, if you're walking for like seven and a half hours in mud, you feel as though you should find something, so you want anything to send you it, really, anything. And I felt as if I was sort of, um, when I was finding these uh, big uh, ichthyosaur vertebrae, which is here. Yes. This is obviously a big sort of marine reptile, dolphin-like reptile. And when you find one of these, right, it's like a rare thing to find a big one like that. Mm -hmm. This is like a religious experience to a fossil hunter. This, this is as good as it gets, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, so this, this, this was another one I had in the cathedral as well. This has got a reincarnation thing going on. So it's, it's communication from one, one, sort of one figure to the other. This is like inside my head, of course. Um, 
this is like a kind of a map of the, the seven here, with the seven. I've got a fossil thing about here. But obviously the ball, this is the ball coming in as well. So I'm using the tide as like a return thing, so we can return to you in the thinking. So that's the idea of that. And that's the, obviously the reverse map of the river there. Um, then I was, in my head, I was thinking of wanting to be like reincarnated as children and stuff like that. It was, it was, um, I really like to have like a slight sort of twisted reincarnation painting in, in the cathedral too. But it's, um, and, and the vertebrae here is meant to be like, almost like a bridge from one to the other. That's, that's in there too. And I sort of, it, I was, at this point, I was really interested in doing like, yeah, non-scientific, scientific fossil paintings. What are the ways into it, which are not the usual routes? You know, I can tell you about the evolution of these creatures, but will it help? Probably not. Have you found that, that skeleton that you found? Have you started to find that? No. No. So that was no. like a pre-what's Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I did this, but I almost did it thinking, like, if I do it, maybe I'll find something. Oh, okay. Use that as like sequences, almost like, not from a movie, but like sequential images. So the, one side of the turtle is, um, like, past. So left hand side, and the other side is like present, right. and like the, each image answers each each other one. They're meant to relate. So you've got things like the oil industry, obviously in the whaling and the oil industry here, or banking, or um, Armageddon inverted commas and things. And there's also text in there, but it's it's sort of it, yeah, it's sort of question and response type thing type of stuff that's going on there. It's kind of it's a bit, it's quite complicated, but yeah, yeah, that's that one. This. It, uh, I, was, I was looking into, I was trying different types of resin, I was trying like, you know, frankincense and yeah. copal and stuff like this, and I'm seeing what's working best, and I had lots of uh, things bursting into flames, but fortunately they burst and burned down SVA, so, you know, still keep the studio, <coughs> studio so that was good. Uh, anyway, so, I, but uh, yeah, I ended on pine tree resin, which is the most manoeuvrable, different amounts of heat produce different colours, etc. Well, obviously it's still boiling hot, so you've got to be a bit careful. <coughs> it's mo most manipulative, but it's like a miraculous medium. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is a little small example of that. Is you actually have a mineral seam within, um, say, a tree that's gone a bit rotten, or it's trying to heal itself. So I'm sort of putting the sap back into the tree and making that whole. Uh, mm -hmm. I know it might sound a bit new agey, it's not supposed to be. It's, it's more from a mineral point of view. But I figure there's a nice circularity there, it's like a really simple idea. Uh, unlike this one. This is, uh, yeah, it's called Mere Shells of Ourselves, and it's. Um, I cut carries. I've done all my life, and uh, it's meant to be a, yeah, a fictitious game, or a game where I, only I, knew, I know the rules, or I find them along the way, like the glass bead game or Warning to Crescent from Radio, Radio 4. Um, and so these, so it's, I was thinking about the 19th century kind of ethnography and the way that, or, or before that, and the way that other people, peoples, we thought they were, uh, they, you know, what, 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 what values we placed on them, or didn't rather. So there's that within here, and then there's other elements, evolutionary elements, and then there's this. So it's like I'm, I'm using like um, ethnography to look into our own society a bit, I'm trying to use those methods, like using a scientific method to, like there's a strategy to find out about what's going on. But the, but the ethnography, I'm sort of trying to point back inside as well. So it's like about the internal as well as the external. So these, this, all those things are unified. So the whole thing is, 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 is a whole, I believe. That's what I, that's what I want it to be. It, it might fail, but um, yeah, I think that's, that would help you understand it best. Or does it confuse you? Yeah. <laughs> People from other cultures and turning them into objects of study because that's what your culture wants or needs for various its own purposes. But in a modern sense it's, it's mm -hmm. very close to the idioms of modern scope. Yes, so, yeah. yeah. You know, natural forms are always taken by artists, aren't they? So that's that's mm -hmm. what goes. Yeah, Snow drifts and hilly wall. Yeah. Yeah. What about the table there? Because that's obviously Looks like a stuffed animal rather than a, yeah. a, a real animal. So what? what well, I, had, I, 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 had a, I had a little animal. slink around in postmodernism there, I'm afraid. Um, oh, it's, it's quite disturbing. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Nice. It's um, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm well into kind of cave painting and things, and uh, I figured that there's lots of caves people have gone in. The people place like cave bear, 
skulls on stalactites and things like this from 30,000 years ago when these caves have been found. And then um, they use the teeth as well as sort of some kind of shamanic thing where the teeth are pushed deep into like clefts in the rock. I think some kind of spell or something like that has been done. And I, th I thought it was kind of curious that, you know, we obviously kind of, this, this is this thing from hum humanity's influency and we're still sort of, kind of cuddling these little things. So there's a continuity. And it's uh, this idea of a sorcerer from Lascaux Cave, you know, with the kind of fallow deer horns. That's what it's holding it up. That's what it's called, the sorcerer. It's, uh, so it's like, yes, yeah, kind of skeletal cave bear meets kind of modern. So it's a, that's what I try and do. I try and link long periods of time and make some sort of sense of it. If I can, you know, just get there. I want to get a broad sweep. But yeah, it, it is, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's great. It's really striking. Yeah, I know. I wish it wasn't. <laughs>